Get a little closer to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get in. Lay on top of him. I like it. I occupy a lot of space. It's like a subconscious thing. Dude. Yeah. Action. Yeah, yeah, check one, two. Oh, where's the camera? Yeah. Yeah. I got my hard part. Welcome to the glorious podcast of the world. Camera's right. This is Bahamas. 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 This is it is great to be here, guys. and the mustache. Thank you for having me on. Ah man, welcome, Thank you for welcome. On. Uh, sorry for uh, for taking a while. No, we we, came, we were late, late coming to the studio. We're like six hours late. I'm late to everywhere, and any of my friends watching this are literally going to be saying preach right now. I'm, <laughs> no, t- they will tell me events are earlier than they actually are. Do you think that's a? Do you think that's like a thing? Like you start being late to things, next thing you know, you're late for everything. Uh, I think it's being a selfish narcissist and thinking that your time scrolling through Instagram before you get in the shower is more important than what you're going to do Damn. at the at the core of it. But it's I just say like, oh, I'm forgetful, but I'm a fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me see that being thing. So first thing I want to say, you said you wrote your. We were talking a little bit earlier. You said your first bars you wrote it eleven months ago. Uh, yeah, I think the night of April twenty sixth, two thousand twenty was. Uh, me and Matt were hanging out. Matt Yo, Mills, love Matt. Shout out, shout follow out Matt, Matt, Matt. Love Mills. Matt. Shout out Matt Mills. So it was, that would be somewhere. SoundCloud, Twitter. He doesn't have Twitter. Yeah, we were chilling. And we were getting, uh, what do you call it, uh, turned up. We were getting rather <laughs> turned up. We were uh, experimenting with some stuff and some things, and we had a lot hold of... Hold on, hold on. Were you guys having sex? Uh, not at first. <laughs> no, no, we weren't <laughs> doing any sex stuff. We were just chilling out by ourselves. We used to live together. We lived together for like seven months. Okay. So ah. he was do- had been doing music yeah. and had been telling me for a long time, uh, dude, rap, 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 rap. Like, honestly, it was kind of no. weird because... I had never rapped before, but he had seen things I had written. Like I wrote poems and stuff all, a yeah. lot. Hmm. Um, yeah, and so that night he was like, he turned this beat on. It was so fucking hard, and he was like, right to this, and uh, I just started. And so you know, we didn't know what was going to happen. It probably like thirty minutes went by, and he said, uh, "Show me what you got." And the beat was rolling, and it started out, it was like a psychopath, clinically depressed hypochondriac, mac and single mothers at the laundromat, find me where the drugs in the party at, plus I'm off a tab, it's got this, and it was, he looked at me and was just like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And dude, yeah, the fucking, the energy that he gave me right there, just like, just gassing me, because he knew that I was there, like super self, I was yeah. so shaky, like even showing him, my, yeah. my best friend, like showing him something that I had written. Yeah. And so from then, yeah, dude, 11 months ago. I pretty much haven't thought about anything besides that since. Which is what you need, man. You need that with just that one person to believe in you, bro. And they can literally yeah, spiral dude. into like a, a whole fucking thing of like. Yeah, like there is no uh, like level of thanks I could ever really give him. And I'm not doing this cornerly for the podcast. There are so many times where not only was I super self-conscious with it, but I'm also a fucking just such a perfectionist that if I can't be one, I'm not going to do it. He would record like the same line for me at our house, like fucking for two hours in a row and i would just keep saying like that's not it that's not how it's supposed to sound and i could tell he'd be frustrated yeah but dude he fucked with what what i was doing what he was doing so heavy he fucking <clears throat> muscled through it and yeah. bro it just gave me the life to really start doing this hell yeah all right man before we get too much into the music let's go a little to your to your upbringing man yes so uh were, were you born here in locally uh, or? bracket ridges i represent bracket, bracket ridges bracket ridge pimping right? uh bracket ridge pimping bracket I'm, ridge till i die i, I remember did. seeing um oh, snapchat or something it was like bracket ridge pimping play bracket ridge pimping yeah yeah yeah. Had, hard had my shit set so, to chattanooga just like them, yeah thank you, thank I had you. My shit set to chattanooga <laughs> for the longest time i was like bro bracket ridges are so much harder than chattanooga like yeah. murders all the time the bodies <laughs> being found meth explosions why is all that over why is that a thing when it goes it comes to hip-hop they always want to brag how many murders that like, my city got 157 know, murders per capita bracket ridges <laughs> probably has more murders than mexico city 
It's what? so Jeez. fucked up. There's only like 80 that. people that live out there, dude. There's a murder every mm. six months. <laughs> like, what? Hey, per stats, capita. The stats will be right here. You inflate those populations, make them proportional. It's like half the population <laughs> dead. Yeah, so if people weren't out there having kids all the time, nobody would live Th- there. That's basically. it, bro. It's just that <laughs> underage, uh, yeah, underage <laughs> meth fucking where you get those seventh and eighth grade kids <laughs> that, you know what? Eighth grade meth fuck sometimes. <laughs> no, no, don't say you know it like I know what you're talking. No, I don't know what you're talking. That's what I'm saying. From the ridges, yeah, no, yeah, from the ridges. Yeah. It was a warrior's Bracken Ridge. At? Uh, it's on South 225. It's just uh, it's just. I don't speak road, man. Uh, so, uh, you know, we got we got we got fans from Ireland. So you got to okay, talk check about this out. Check this out. It's a uh, North United Georgia. States. It's in the United States, the <laughs> state of Georgia. Uh, the county of Murray, the city of Chatsworth, not incorporated, and it's in uh, the condition of crippling disrepair. Please help us. <laughs> Send money. That's like, that is the most accurate location I've ever heard for. Like, Try to zoom it down for these guys. Man. Also, it's a funny thing, too, because like, uh, when we first started doing the podcast, before we actually did like the whole interview stuff, we are looking into like stories and like murders and shit around town, and uh, Bracken Ridge has actually popped up. There's I a swear f- to God. There's a family supposedly that's like runs the shit up over there, and like supposedly you come up on their property, they like they even kill the cops and shit if they pull up on Whoa. their shit. Oh, we, were, we weren't going to talk about that. That's my, I'm, just <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, uh, there's really like a ridiculous amount of that stuff going on down there. It's, I don't know how that happened either. I think it's just off the beaten path. Like it's so yeah. far from any city, and then like the the nature of it. I had hurt my back one time. I went real deep into like the history of the Bracket Ridges for some reason. Tim Howard wrote this book about Murray County. Uh, my bad if I'm going off the No, you're perfect. You're perfect. You're perfect. There was a uh, there was a Cherokee chief named uh, James E. Brackett, and when the Cherokee Removal Act happened in the 1840s with Andrew Jackson moved all the Cherokees out of here, he actually refused to leave. James E. Brackett did, and they lived back there in the Brackett Ridges. It refers to like the topography of the land, the up yeah. and down rises in the hills, and because they were uh, like adept uh, skirmish warriors, I guess, they never got evicted from here. So the ones in... Uh, the Smoky Mountains, uh, what do you call it, where the casino is, fucking mm. Cherokee, Cherokee, North Carolina. Yeah. Those people didn't get evicted or sent out Cherokee removal also because of topography. And the only other ones that I know about would be in the Bracket Ridges. And so it kind of started out with a rebellious nature. I don't know how the how the white trash got there. Uh, <laughs> but... Yeah, that's fucking my my hood, dog. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it crazy how Andrew Jackson was like a piece of shit president? He's like in the most popular like money bill yeah. ever. You, like mean, twenty dollar bill is like the most thing I feel like you see. Like it's just like a oh, twenty. I can make 20, a case 20. for Andrew Jackson though. Uh, what? Don't I'll do d- that. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna nah, do yeah, it. definitely do it. Okay, do check it. this out. Um, what is Andrew? I, don't quote me. He's like the the leader of the army of I Kentucky think it's or something like that during the War of eighteen twelve. Okay, so in uh, 1776, the United States was just like, okay, fuck England. That's unique because England was the most powerful and expensive military ever assembled in the history of the world, and they just fucked up France, who was next door to them. Mm-hmm. So it was like, and dude, we didn't have shit over here. Like, they were just a bunch of libertarian farmers that said, They were fuck taxing the tea like a motherfucker. Motherfuckers yeah, love tea. It wasn't even that, bro. They were going <laughs> to secede if they weren't taxing shit because they weren't going to be ruled by the crown saying. forever. Yeah. They, were, they were rich as fuck from shipping all kinds of tobacco and humans and all kind of shit they were rich and they weren't going to be ruled but okay we win unexpectedly um the seven years war gets fought i think directly after that that's when uh britain finally stomps france out france no longer a threat and so they come uh around florida and they're going to invade the war of 1812 starts revolutionary war start part two we're really not doing good we're uh the white house was burned uh the original white house yeah. in 1812 uh and james madison maybe is in office but uh, Andrew Jackson gets word that uh, the British are coming to New Orleans. Instead of hitting the East Coast, they're going to come and go up the Mississippi River and essentially crush the Americans from the side. And so he travels something like three or 400 miles in less than a week on foot with all of the artillery. And I mean, they dump all their ammo, essentially. This were the, the same if you've ever heard, don't shoot until you see the whites of their eyes. Yeah. It's because they were so low on ammo at the Battle of New Orleans. that See, where I'm from, they say shoot as soon as you see the whites. Yeah, that's essentially the same. That's, that originated from, uh, oh, the whites. Yeah. Oh, terrific. <laughs> yeah, but he goes there and uh, he forts the British. And had he not done, had he, and he was like, the stories go, of course, written by fucking who knows, that he like himself was helping move cannons and stuff through the, because they all had to go through the swamp to get yeah. to New Orleans. So Andrew Jackson, we, we probably wouldn't be a sovereign nation without him, honestly. And granted, he's a fuck. 
and yeah. did evict the Native Americans and did lose the Supreme Court case to the racist Cherokees. Racist as fuck, too, dude. Of course, but it's fucking I feel like everybody yeah. was wasn't racist. Well. Who wasn't? Everybody was racist, yeah. The cars weren't invented yet. People couldn't even leave, leave their villages. Most people had children with their cousins. Yeah. Yeah, Kelvin. And that's, that, no, 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 oh, I'm not trying dude. to school. Uh, no yeah, like yeah, Kelvin. Kelvin you got stupid school. motherfucker. Learn to so fucking pick up a history guys. book. <laughs> uh, I just no, know Andrew Jackson's a piece of shit, dude. He is a fuck in a lot of ways, but well, fucking, that's the thing with history is it's never one-sided. It's, yeah, and the thing is, I feel like you could make a case for almost every president. Like, every president like did something to FDR. be where we're at. Yeah, fuck FDR. I'm not making this political. You know, Franklin D. Roosevelt? Why? Why is it's a tyrant, bro? Four terms? Come on, man. Yeah. Well, no, oh, yeah. Come on, what are you doing? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Dang, right. he really hit four terms. He died. Yeah. yeah, he died before he was inaugurated the fourth yeah. time, but he was elected four times. So he's oh, that's a, that's before the law of the two yeah. terms came. No, in. no, no. They it made was it because of him. Yeah. Yeah. No, because well, actually, I think it was already in place, but he was just everybody else was retiring like before the like president I, was set by george washington he left voluntarily after yeah two. because he didn't want the so like everybody yeah. else knew like okay two is where we draw that's the american thing to do right yeah, yeah. but fdr was a was commun- in there bro communist yeah you know say give a man a little bit of power and you see who he really is that's though. it he starts social security it's gonna be corrupt I'm gonna be empty by the time we get old you know what i'm saying Start, yeah i ain't gonna get into social it's just fucked up do you think like do you think like most people would be pieces of shit if they were rich no Probably. you think most people are like yes. decent people because they're poor uh yeah i don't think most people are decent people i think poor people yeah i think poor people can be pieces of shit too man but i get what you're saying you know what i mean i think um there's more humble people because they're poor than they're having everything like given to them yeah of course they're gonna be humble so they gotta Whatever act nice to other people they're because they're like in this in the community right but you feel like if i feel like if they were, like people like most people like if they could get money then they really didn't have to like socialize with most people then they could just like kind of just be fucking dicks yeah I don't know. I think just I think having it would just kind of show your true character. I guess you got to be in the yeah. community. That's it. Like, cause you know, like these fucks, they're friends with each other, so they're yeah. probably very nice to each other. Which is crazy, man. Which is really how people stay rich because, like, because if you're born with a dad that's already a billionaire, he already has like all these fucking connections, and then. If you just follow that same blueprint, then you'll eventually be a fucking billionaire, too. Yeah, dude, if I had it all over to do again, and I got to pick, I would definitely be born rich next time, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. definitely. definitely. We <laughs> fucked that up, huh, dude? Bro, I really fumbled the bag with that Dude, because we were like, oh, no, we'll work for ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Bro, and, and I looked it up. My family been here since 1732, and I thought, not one dime of generational wealth to give me. You have... Fa- and they've been white the whole time. <laughs> they haven't done shit over here. They've so, been fucking up. So growing up in uh, Racket Ridge, in and then the did you grow up there the whole, whole yeah. time? And then uh, I still, uh, yeah, my dad still lived in the house that I was born, not born in. Uh, you know, it's not. Like I mean, I would believe it if you would so, say that to yeah. so. uh No, we did a bathtub delivery with a uh, really Racket Ridge <laughs> midwife. No. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, he still lived there. Uh, uh, and pretty much until I was born there, and then I lived there till maybe 15. My parents got a divorce, and uh, my mom all of worked, ours did. My what mom worked nights, and so I could do whatever the fuck I wanted if I moved in with her. So I mm. moved to Chatsworth, and uh, yeah, then I moved back when I got out of the Navy. I moved back there, stayed with my dad a little while. Moved. So how was uh, life growing up for you? Um, really cool, man. Honestly, we like I guess it was a lot of uh, like wild, wilder shit to be uh kind of around just because it you know my my parents are both still alive so i ain't gonna talk too much, too much shit and <laughs> dude but regardless of all the craziness and chaos that did go on and the stuff that i did get exposed to and had to see that maybe other kids did not see so much of they loved us so much and through my life i look at people and it's not that i think your parents didn't love you but i can tell they did not get the right level of affirmation young and it is manifesting as like uh really I guess not transparent uh, personality deficiencies, but you can tell it's like a uh, a complex that they will have because they didn't get affirmation young enough. So how do you think they'll portray, them, portray themselves? How do you think they'll like someone that acts like that? Um, like people that are just like dickheads? Or? But, like somebody that needs an ass whooping, bro. Like that? Like somebody that needs their ass whooped. Or um, you often see it in women who don't have a good relationship with their father or absentee fathers. Well. It's very Good important for a fucking. woman to get male affirmation young, according to most psychologists. Mm-hmm. And so you'll see promiscuity come out of her. And I can always tell so because cool. uh, I, have, I have been a magnet for uh, daddy issues in my life. So I could, I've, either all women have them or only women that like me have daddy issues. <laughs> <laughs> 
Probably okay. all women. It's about your mustache because you kind of look like a dad, dude. Yeah, bro, you know, I just got to sound the winners, bro. I usually shave it off. and I'm trying to cultivate this rap nah, or something. So I'm dabbing it. it up for the long now. How long have oh, you been growing it up for? Uh, I started last night. Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> I, just, I just grew this for the podcast. How old are you, dude? Uh, I'm 28. 28, you're our age, dude. 28, we talked yeah. about this on the car. I'm gonna yeah, die soon. Yeah, cause we're like, how old? I'm gonna die soon. He's like, how old do you think he is? He's like, he's our age. He's like, how come he looks like a little bit older? I thought it was a mullet, but he was like, nah, it's definitely the mustache. Oh no, no, it's terrible life practices. <laughs> like I said, I was the military. I was in there five years. You aged double, so that was ten years there. Yeah. And then I think I told you guys earlier, white people already age like bananas. So it's like. Once you start to slip as a white, it's over for you. <laughs> so it's a, you yeah, just, but like you can make like banana bread. No, like bro, there's no silver lining because look, I, I'm skinny, bro. I look down, I still got these wrinkles and stuff coming down. My skin about to drop, bro. Dude, with that shirt on, you look like you grow like organic peas and shit. <laughs> I'm super heady, bro. I make heady trades, peas for crystals, bro. So, <laughs> what made you want to join? So you were in the Navy. Yes. What made you want to enlist in the Navy? Uh, my 1.9 your... GPA. <laughs> Yeah, it, hell yeah! It made it very appealing. That's uh, one over a dom, dude. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Why the why the navy? Why that branch? Um, I originally took the ASVAB with the army, but I got a ninety four on my ASVAB, and they wanted That's to good. suggest me to the naval nuclear engineering program, which I did get accepted into. Uh, but it turns out, I actually not only I was they found out at MEPS I was colorblind, and mm. so colorblind. Colorblind. He means like colorblind. Like he's actually colorblind. He is race. Not not. He's not racist. It's like two different <laughs> oh, things. Yeah. So like, I can't say. Okay, look. It's a red green color deficiency. I forget the name of it. I got to turn it on on video games so I can tell what's what. Okay, 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 yeah, I can yeah. tell colors, but it's like the transition of colors. I guess this is how I've deduced it is not the same uh, vibrancy as it is for other people. Mm. Like green and yellow kind of look the same. Right. So like your shirt. So you got green, orange, and orange yellow. shirt, uh, green leaves, yellow shit. See, that's what I, I'm on your team, bro. I'm not that fucking colorblind, but they said apparently I can't be a nuclear engineer because of that. Huh. So Did you could fucking blow shit up. I think bro, that's a good reason. They're dude. very, very strict with that. I don't want one boy trying to be a pilot and you couldn't with that. Hit the green button. Yeah. Which one? <laughs> bro, I told fuck off. They're all gray to me. That's wrong. <laughs> 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 oh yeah and then i got a they so i was gonna not be in the military i told the guy up there like no i'm leaving because i was really only i was a super cocky little fuck back then mm -hmm. oh see so like i want to go for this job and that's it that's really the only reason i went to the military is because that's like the highest asvab requirement position in the military and to me because of my 1.9 gpa and looking forward at my downward life trajectory <laughs> where i had to keep doing what i was doing i thought bro what a fucking ninth inning grand slam to just go be a nuclear engineer even though i fucked off all the high school yeah. <laughs> fucked yeah. up, bro. And yeah, and then they weren't gonna let me do that. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to be Captain America. I just want to flex with this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, they ended up offering me a different position, which is uh, CTN. It's the Navy's like uh, networking team, crypto tech networking. It's like uh, they kind of do like hack and anti hack stuff. It's like the smallest job in the Navy. And so I was super excited about that. You know, another ego pump for my dumbass. And so I agreed <laughs> yeah. to that. And then I get the maps, and then they find some drug charges that I wasn't going to tell them about. Uh, <laughs> so you had, like, penny, penny charges? or It was bullshit, bro. Like, yeah, we got arrested. Some bullshit. Nobody claimed the weed. There was, like, 11 people there. They took us all to jail, beat the case, requested my Sixth Amendment right to a fair and speedy trial. But you trial. didn't tell them, so... But so I, that's what that's what fucked well, up because you didn't the tell thing them. Is I low key did tell them. I did tell my. Well, you can't low key tell no, you. You no. tell them, but you don't tell no, them. There's no low key. He told them, but he whispered it. You I, I don't wanna, I don't he didn't wanna, hear it. Don, he he whispered can. it to him. I'm out in the recruiter, bro. Okay, look, this dude kind of <laughs> railed me, honestly. Right. Because he said, "I'm about to ask you a series of questions." No stands for Navy opportunity. Yes stands for your enlistment stops. Have you ever smoked marijuana? I was hot then. Oh, <laughs> like, uh, no. And he asked me if I'd ever got arrested, dude. He, oh, my God. I called him, bro. When I got arrested, I, I made wine. Me and my dad made some wine. I gave it to him for Christmas, bro. I thought, made wine? I, me and my dad made wine every year for probably like eight or nine years. Since I was like crushed food. grapes? and Yeah, we would crush the grapes. We had the jugs with the uh, methane burp valves and the yeast additive sugar additive. Do you, and you say you still make some? I would love to try uh, some. I don't now. The, now, uh, 
I got a secret family recipe for your ass, for real. Uh, <laughs> so, it sounds like you can molest me. I like that. <laughs> hey, wait, wait till you drink I got some homegrown stuff wait, for wait, that wait, ass, dog. of this. I won't have to. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be able to say no. Sorry, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> I, I'm going to get me too soon, probably, and I don't want it to be. Dude, Damn, so actually, yeah, it's actually, coming, dog, but it's all right. So I drove from Orlando today, 12 hours, right? Mm-hmm. And I was listening to this podcast about this. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. This is a guy Stanley named... Stanley Boys. Yeah, yeah. After yeah. I watched that one, uh, I was watching this one about this dude named, I don't know if you guys heard him, like, his name is, like, Bo something, but he was, like, in the army, and then he, like, walked off. Bo Bergdahl. Mm-hmm. He oh, walked, yeah. He walked off his, like, whatchamacallit, his base, and then got kidnapped by, like, a bunch of, um like, Taliban motherfuckers. But he was on post when he walked off. He Literally, was yeah. actively responsible for guarding one position. Yeah. It wasn't like he was on break. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he just left. He just left because he wanted. He wanted like he wanted like the the dust. You know the dust shit. Like he wanted like he wanted like people to go look for him so then he could like expose the military for all the bullshit that we're saying. That's what he was saying. But in the midst of all that, he gets kidnapped by like the Taliban or whatever, and then like literally the and they sent like all these platoons and like thousands of soldiers to go look for this motherfucker waits millions and billions of dollars looking for his ass because his dumb ass decided to do this dumb shit and then like people get killed like hundreds of fucking yeah. like soldiers get killed and all this shit and i was just like and then i remember like like hearing the guys that were looking for him like their interviews or whatever and they were just like I've never been like so. Like if I would have found him myself, I would have shot him. Like they were Damn. so pissed looking it's for the this most guy. military thing ever, though. Like for just to be on post and be like, ah, fuck it, I, I'm gonna go do something else. It's yeah. uh, I think I'm gonna go military, home. Now. There's a lot of fucks. <laughs> I, I can be. I'm not anti-military, of course, but you gotta think about who joins, bro. Can't get into Ooh, college. Yeah. Failed out of college. Yeah. Fucking gonna kill yourself at a job. Potential criminal charges that are dropped uh, conditionally on entry. We got some fucking. It's the oh, reason I joined, there, dude. Bro. dude. That was all that. Like, literally, they were talking about, like, one at one point, they went, like, on a 32-day mission and they had to, like, sleep in the Jeep or, like, sleep, like, in the fucking woods. Like, they didn't change days. or bathe for, like, 30 days, dude. But here's the thing, also. Looking for this fuck, dude. When stories about the military get blown up in the media, always be suspicious because you never... I mean, these, these were the dudes, like, that were there. No, I know, I'm aware. Even when you see Lone Survivor, they're when coming. you see shit like that... No, 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 no. weird, no, dude. There's so much inaccuracy, and it's like... What are they trying to do? They're trying to cultivate an image into the mind of the public. That's they want the public to think one thing. So they and Bo, Bo Bergdahl is a fuck. I'm not talking yeah, about fuck this specifically. That guy all but day. when I think when anything from the military is ever in the media, I'm always immediately scrutinous of it because there's public affairs officers like media people at so many different levels of the military. By the time something gets out, it's such a we know what people will think when they hear this right. version of the story that it is. It's something to think about, really. Yeah, that is one thing. There was like a billion versions because, like, the the Taliban was saying they were treating them nice, and he was saying that they were like tied him up to a bed for like ever. They didn't give him food for like two months or some crazy shit like that. Yeah, yeah I don't think we killed Osama bin Laden. I think that men that shit was party, iffy, huh? All of that shit, bro. Why? Okay. One, we fucking dropped bunker busters and shit for like 11 years all over Afghanistan trying to kill this motherfucker. We killed so many innocent people with goddamn uh, drones and shit. Okay, check this out. What, here, you're the government now. We never could confirm the kill because we killed you, George, are the government. Shit. You have yeah. wasted billions of taxpayers Fucking narc. to get this oil. I mean, to find Osama bin Laden. I eat today. Uh, you probably did kill him. Oh, oh my God. All right. All right. the government. You know that. All right. Oh, oh, the, the government. The, the, the long way. way. <laughs> yeah, we probably did kill Osama, dude, but you have to have closure for the American public. To, and you got to keep people interested in paying this higher tax rate to fund this war. You know what I'm saying? We got to get a, a confirmed kill. Yeah. So they find him. What's the official story? They buried him at sea mm-hmm. with no photos taken, so he wouldn't become a martyr, bro. Honestly, do you fucking believe this? If we did, if we killed Osama bin Laden, there's a video on the internet of Saddam Hussein literally being hanged and people throwing shit at him. There's yeah. a video of Gaddafi getting fucked with a knife yeah, on the roof yeah. of his car, dude. There's like a ton of fucking Taliban leaders that fucking Guantanamo Bay getting yeah. fucking waterboarded and shit. If we 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 floated down in two helicopters and one of the helicopters crashed because if you're a Navy SEAL fucking helicopter pilot, you're going to fuck it. You have no idea that the walls are going to change the trajectory of your uplift. That's so fake, bro. That's, they're, that's the best pilot in the impl- entire world, probably, in a helicopter. He had no idea. Fuck you.
<laughs> government. Right. No. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> but all of that stuff, though. That's why they make the movie now because yeah. it's already a suspicious story. It's already sketchy as hell. But most people aren't gonna think about it. They see it on the news. It's just the seeds planted. They move along. They never think about it. But five years in the future, somebody asks them, "Is Osama dead?" Like, yeah, I think they killed him and buried him in sea. Da da da. No thought. But now that's not good enough. You want to cultivate this fucking this pro government american superhero yeah so you make the movie zero, zero dark 30 i think is the one yeah. the fucking secret mission they fly in now just like with titanic just like with jurassic park big mama's house you too. have this thing that we mm -hmm. that we Congress don't know Godzilla. about and this image is created by hollywood in our heads subconsciously we don't think of it as fact or fiction it's just in there and then mm -hmm. in the future that influences your thought like Ti Ti titanic literally sank like that bro Did it? but yeah but Did in it? your man your mind you think like oh the shit split in two the yeah. fucking dude was on the door what if the whole of the yeah. ship was like seven inch thick pure tempered steel and some ice broke that that's so crazy Cat. i'm not i'm just saying titanic Cat. is one of those movies where they make uh Yo, they both could have fit on that fucking door. They could have. Oh, sure. That's, For yeah. sure. Yeah. They both could have fit on that door. That motherfucker didn't have to die like that. She didn't even try. He didn't even try. And then the speedboat so literally more... rolled up like five minutes after he goes under the water. Shh. Shh. He's so much more of a gentleman than me, bro. Like, I would have let her on the door first. For sure. Dead ass. But I would have been trying to get on the door until I died. Oh, and yeah. I, like, oh, don't let me knock you off the door. I would have got up, you know. Well, you just hang on like this. It's... Just like, just like, like, body up. My wife would turn me later, but... I'll never let go. I'll never let go. And she let go. Oh, my God. That was a great impression, too. Yeah. <laughs> so that's so good, dude. But that's one of those movies where it's about the love story. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Yo, yeah. King Kong the died in King the... Kong versus Godzilla. King Kong died? Yep. Oh, what? Edit this out, bro. What no, he didn't. Die. I'm just joking. Oh, my God. I wasn't going to watch it anyway. It was a good movie. I just watched uh, it. But, I mean, like, obviously, right? This, like, huge, like, gorilla against this... Nah. Dinosaur with laser beams big flies. Monkey can win. Nah, big I was monk. I love, I love, I love God. I mean, I love God, Godzilla, Kong. Godzilla gave fucking Kong the hands though. Godzilla, um, Godzilla put him in his place. He I, didn't die. Nobody died. It was a draw. Ah oh, damn! I feel like you're lying now. No, it is. It uh, was so they make a home movie for a draw, dude. Yeah, that was on a TV. I was never gonna you, you don't own a TV. I I've owned a TV for like a three month period of my life, uh, and I only used it to watch to play Smite on sometimes when me and Matt live play together. what. Smite, it's a uh, MOBA multi, uh, mobile online battle fucking something. MOBA, mo uh, multi online battle arena. Yo, tuck it in a little bit, dog. You look oh, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I'm all the way. In. I have to piss, bro. I've been drinking twisted tea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. Hey, go ahead. So right here, we're going to put the commercial. Oh, Boom. yes. Go ahead. Oh, hey. Joe from the Stanley Oni Boys here. Ever want to throw some axes? Do you live in the Northwest Georgia area? Well, right here in Don Georgia, we have Big Axe Throwing. At Big's Axe, you can bring all your family and friends and throw axes. You can even play Zenga like my boy Don right here. Hey, Don from Stanley Oni Boys. Here at Big's Axe, we're better than known, better than friendly. Nothing like having a couple beers, throwing a couple axes with your friends. Isn't that right, Griffin? Oh, hey, it's Griffin. And when you hear your first bullseye here at Big Zach's, you get Viking up and you get a picture go on the wall. And we also have seasonal leagues where people can come out and participate in an eight week league event for a chance to win some medals and, and uh, medallions. So make sure you come check them out at 825 Chattanooga Avenue. We're just not a business, we're a family. I saw! No, this episode dude. is also brought to you by Twisted Tea. Oh, yes. Let me do this real quick. This episode is brought to you by Twisted Tea Half and Half. The perfect drink while the fix, creative... Fix, fix that mic. Oh, fix the mic. Fix the mic. The perfect drink for creative genius and the composition of different musical pieces around the world. Twisted Tea doesn't actually sponsor me, but if you're watching this on TikTok or Instagram or wherever, you should tag Twisted Tea, email it to Twisted Tea, write a letter to Twisted Tea. Uh, I know they're probably reeling after the uh, the promo with the head slap has kind of died off. They're going to need a new face for the uh, franchise. And that's me, Eat the Freak, brought to you by Twisted Tea. Twisted Tea. If you don't drink it, then fuck, fuck you. you. Sit down, grab a tea. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, no idea where we left off, but um, how was your time in the military? 
Uh, big gay. Mostly big. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like ninety-eight percent big gay. The worst thing I, you could ever do, and would never do again. And then two percent, like what I would consider to be almost an unparallelable good time. Like the bad was like uh, we did a sixty-three day underway one time. Oh, we're out to sea, to sea land for sixty-three days. No off days during the whole thing. I'm working in a galley as a cook. Just so lazy. You can have. That's the worst thing to Burned do. On an aircraft carrier, there's five thousand people. I'm working in the fucking Affy Alley. It's the biggest one on the show. We probably served 4,000, 3,000 people. Jesus. Like, it was pretty garbage. Uh, two, three hours of sleep a night. But then the good was like cocaine and hooks <laughs> in Europe, bro. I'm chilling out with my boys. There's no reason they should trust us to be alone, but they do. We're just <laughs> wasted on absinthe peeing in public. Sure. So you're being a cook. What happened to your dream of being a cryptocurrency, oh, cryptologist? Cryptologist. Yeah, they found that. Um, Crypt. They found that fucking drug charge, dog. Oh, so yeah, yeah, they yeah, told boy. me, they told me you can be a cook or... God, like just a, like this fucking great job. <laughs> just the that's shitty what I was job. So, <laughs> nothing in the middle. <laughs> no. So once again, I said, because I'm colorblind. That was the thing that kept me out of so much different shit uh, was they could have gave me other shit. So I was like, bro, fuck no. I was like, I, I'm already in the military at this point. I'm at boot camp. Like, I'm enlisted. Oh, so you didn't have a contract going in. No, I did. I had the crypto contract. But oh. I went to get my top secret security Whoa. clearance, and they ran my shit. And even though I beat the case, I beat them charges. No. Uh, BX, the fact up. that I was arrested at all showed that I had, was in close proximity mm. to nefarious activity. Like, bro, come on, let me hack shit. I'm, <laughs> let me hack shit. I'm smart. <laughs> let me get in there, dog. Yes, I was a cook. Uh, it was fucking, uh, shout out all my CSs. Cooks, Navy Cooks. Hell yeah, gang gang. Big from Robin Big, Navy Cook. Oh, oh yeah, the, yeah. He, 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 How were the cooks in uh in, in the fucking Marines? Though? Yeah, so uh, you're the I Marines. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't cook, but um, you always those are the guys you always want to be friends with though. With oh, cooks, yeah. dog. Because you be like, oh, what's up, big dog? And then they see you in line, boom, give you an extra, you know, scoop mm-hmm. or whatever. It's that I'm like, don't put your balls in my food this time. <laughs> you know, the, 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 or do or do. Yeah, Sometimes or do. You, you know, those depends. Days, you know? Hooks gangster as fuck in the in the. Yeah, like, that just, like hook. It just. The whole culture of it was so just, I felt like, cool. Just, yeah. like, very what about the, hookup related. Oh, yeah, hookup definitely. oriented. Like, they knew everybody. It's like prison. Yes, dude. There was somebody where I slept. There was, like, uh, probably 70 of us cooks that slept in this little burden. Uh, bro, so between everybody in there, they could, you could get anything you wanted ever. You could get, I mean, you could get drugs. You could get pussy. You could find, like, they, they were pimping, pimping on the ship. I'm not kidding, like. They knew cooks were plugged, bro. We would have dice games sometimes. And it's like, <laughs> this, this, this is kind of. Are you sure you didn't go to jail for five Yeah, are you, yeah are you sure? Was it not prison yeah, or. Culture, okay. So, like, another important thing to note is that the cooks, Navy cooks, are like, uh, I would say predominantly black is an understatement. It's a like mm. very cultural uh, occupation in the military, in the Navy at least. And, bro, I loved it. Bro. We shoot dice. And the thing was, it was so criminal in nature. We would have a dude, uh, fuck, who did it? One dude, Catron maybe did it. He stands uh, outside. Whoa, hold on. Stop. Stop. The dude's name was Catron? Like a fucking like like a transformer? Yeah, like a Decepticon? <laughs> he was Jewish, bro. He was Jewish. He had a little blonde Jew mullet or Jew fro thing. Yeah. Uh, he would stand outside the door and not let people in so we could have our dice game. Oh, hey, yo, Catron's a real one right there. Bro, was, man. Oh, the globe might. Let me get this up here. You got to get in there a little bit. All right, you good, though. Okay. <laughs> I actually like this. I'm just going to make sure my mustache touches it the whole time. <laughs> nah, you're good. Way, because I, He's going to get really loud right now. Overall, my time in the military, man, it was, I would, fuck, I would not, maybe not do it again, but I'm so glad that I did do it because I was, even though I really appreciate my upbringing, how much my parents loved me, I did not know how to actually be like a productive member of society because right. mm. you only know what you really grow, are around. You know, so if you don't see nobody doing the things that later on you figure out you need to do, then you don't know what to do. It's not like you're doing the wrong thing. It's you don't know the right thing. So I went there, and not that that's the right thing because those military suicide is through the roof because they live these fucking split lives from their actual persona and they kill themselves for it. Uh, but I did see how to, you know, wake up on time. I did see how to like, do really what I saw was what I can do if I apply myself. That was the sickest part. I'm in second class in like two and a half you still, years. You still, make, you still make your bed every morning? 
Fuck no, dude. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a trash can. I really? Find, I don't even bathe if I'm not working. Dude, I gotta, I'm, I gotta make. Oh I got something about me. I gotta make my bed every morning. If I don't, I feel weird. No. Uh, this is yet, yeah, dude. I will know how much I like a chick by if. I fucking have to have my bed made when she comes over. Oh, like you have to tidy uh, up or not? Bro, and I'm I'm looking for that. I'm looking for the one that makes me never want to stop making my bed. So honestly. hey, Eat the Freak's number will be down here. Right she want to suck him off. He just posted up a nude, put an emoji. Yeah. y'all come right. over in the bed. The bed fucked up. Hey, the, 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 the freak, the freak is not for nothing, dog. Yeah. The freak Yo. is there for a reason. And yeah. the eeks noise you make while you getting freaked. Uh, you said my lawyers. Eeks, the noise you make when you get a Oh, freak. the noise, yeah. The girl. Eek, eek, eek. Yeah, my name is actually Anna Can you imagine? It's Anna for the sound I make when I explosively ejaculate. Not you, like. Explosively ejaculate. Right, yeah, too. Bro, I got some pressure, dog. I don't know what's up. I'm not, Yo, I'm you're, you're, you're fucking a girl. And you're fucking a girl, she was like, eek, eek. Or you're fucking it when you stop? Eek, eek. Yes, I would stop. But what are you doing? Only, that's the only way I can finish now. If they say, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I want to fuck a You fuck a walrus? You fuck a seagull? <laughs> if I could get that noise replicated by a woman, just... I would be gone, dude. Just bust I'll right there, dude. I'll blow her through the wall. This is just off. What's the freakiest thing a girl's ever told you during sex, dude? Uh, told me? Yeah. Oh, bro. Okay, so it, I don't know if it was overall freakiest, but I guess it's like pornish. There was this chick when I was in the Navy. Uh, God, Joey McDonald, you don't think it's funny? Still I think so Pornish funny. is the uh, spinoff fucking season of Blackish, dude. It's just yeah. A- yeah, Pornish. <laughs> okay, so I fucked this chick on and off for like a long time in the Navy, but so did my homie. <laughs> Shout out to her one time. Well, yeah, we did three people stuff even one time. Dude. Three people <laughs> stuff. Three <man>. people <laughs> God, whatever that means. She was such a trooper, bro. But okay. No, she actually was because she was in the military. She was actually a trooper. She's literally a trooper. Oh, yeah, she's a trooper. Uh, okay, yeah, so bro, I hadn't fucked this chick in like nine months, right? I, th- I thought it was over. She had a steady boyfriend, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing my own thing. Uh, but yeah, so we went and she called me. She's like, you want to go eat Mexican food tonight? I was like, bro, fuck, bitch. She's like, you know, we just haven't seen each other. I thought, okay, I'll fuck, whatever. So, <laughs> we go, dude. She orders, uh, what is it, Don Julio Dumpster. It's like the biggest, most gnarly margarita at this place. So I'm going to turn up with her. I don't care, but whatever. Somebody figure out who's driving. Flip the coin. So we drink these dudes and go back to her house. Okay, so I start fucking this chick, essentially. There's some in, in between play. And she's just like, and this is maybe three, four minutes, which sounds like not long. She's like, yeah, you're fucking like that pussy. Yeah, you fucking missed this pussy. You fucking <laughs> Bro, you know, I'm still a young man. I'm maybe 22, 23. I've jerked <laughs> off a million times. I've seen some porn. Yeah. I didn't know real girls did this. Real man. girls <laughs> talk. I talk became a man that day. Stop. Because I was talking back. I was like, fuck yeah, I missed this pussy, bitch. Hell yeah. <laughs> she got me into it, bro. And we went. You ever had a girl moan so loud that you almost think she's faking it? Uh, like, this, yeah. shit, this shit can't be this good. Yeah, I know. I'm capping right now. I've seen my own dick, and I know. Uh, <laughs> I, I know. Know what it's capable of. I know they're fake. Yeah, I appreciate them. Just one. Yeah. For me to think Thank it's you. Good, because that's for my ego. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, so yeah. I let them fake it, bro. I t- yeah. turn it up. Even. I feel like I can <laughs> last. I feel like I can last as long as I want until a girl starts like either like saying some crazy freaky shit. Yeah. Or like starts moaning extra loud. I'm like, gosh, shut the fuck up. You throwing my vibe right now. Bro, there's levels to that moaning. Because this chick wasn't notorious like uh, <laughs> but Me and my homie Joe, of course, she's talking a- back. Because we both fucking this chick. And she would get loud with it, bro. She would. And we had a friend. Was she, was she louder with the homie, though? Uh... I don't know, dude. Because when we... How did, was the three-person yeah, stuff? three, three man stuff. Three people and... stuff. So me... Damn Damn, I ain't going to incriminate him. Yeah, but I already did. You uh, did. Hey, we, we could we could bleep it out. Shut up, Megatron. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. So my, uh, we had almost like a good strategy. It wasn't like a, a pre-thought about strategy for three people stuff because we were frequenters of three people stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. My Navy homies that watch this gonna know till we did some three people stuff. Uh, Yeah, like a two goal plan for three people. Yeah, but dude, here we got this story work down, right? So we would be like, uh, we call ourselves the Midnight Riders because we were both (laughs) we were both E threes. We when we were overseas in Europe and shit, we had to be back on the ship at midnight. So Mm. we fucking ride hard till midnight. (laughs) (laughs) We weren't high enough rank to stay out overnight, so we called ourselves the Midnight Riders. And so what we would start doing is one of us would have a girlfriend or a little whatever. And we would find a way to, you know, conveniently bring up this this story where me and Joe had a pact that if we ever had a threesome with a chick, we would get tattoos that said Midnight Riders on us. And that would be like our way to c- c- commiserate it or whatever. Bro, it was a no fail. I don't know if it's like the, the chick was felt so significant. 
But we never got the tattoo either. <laughs> <laughs> never. Oh, oh shit. Never. never. It was just... Uh... So she basically did it just so you guys would get the tattoo? Yeah, but she's not the only one, bro. Well, yeah. Look, at your... If a bitch don't already want to fuck the both of you, she's not going to do it for a tattoo. She, if the girls want to do it, you're, and yeah. just like everybody's equally as horny, and that's very, and you only do what you know, you feel like you can justify in your own morality, so you give them a little extra reason, you know? Commit yeah, because they'd be like, oh, well, yeah, you know, and that's, you that's a crazy story. That tattoo? Oh, hell I no. think girls just want clout, dude. <laughs> I fucked girls before and they'll be like, oh my God, you're going to talk about this on the podcast, aren't you? <laughs> and it's like, bitch, you just oh, fuck me so I can mention you on the podcast. Oh, no. yes. The answer is yes. I yeah. will. <laughs> 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 fuck. All right, man. So, um, so you're telling the Navy. So you went on what is Muse or like, Muse? What, what would you, what would you guys call them? Cruise. So just cruises, booze cruise deployments. Uh, yeah, I did three deployments in five years. Was over there. Where, where all did you go? Um, I went to fuck little places. Palma de, Palma de Mallorca, uh, Palma, Spain, essentially. I think. Oh, okay. Uh, but we went there during spring break. It's like a fucking European spring break location. It's pretty lit. Went to Rhodes, Greece. Went to Dubai, probably like nine times. Went to Bahrain, maybe ten times. Went to Italy a couple of times. Uh, Portugal was the sickest fucking place in the world. Every drug is legal, bro. <laughs> Every drug. Cocaine, hashish. <laughs> they, they would do that. We got off the bus, bro. There's a guy who said cocaine, hashish. You know, they actually have a, they actually have a lower, like, uh, criminal, like... Much lower. Much lower. Much lower, yeah. Because you... Because a lot of it is drugs. Market. Now I don't have to, like... I don't have to go buy and this from tax, a guy... You that, could tax the fuck out of it, too. Yeah, but they... Bro, the, it was so pure there. I was... Talking to a gentleman. <laughs> you have to make it in a Stop. dirty trap house. Of course Stop it's pure. Talking to a gentleman outside of the uh, of a pizzeria there. And he was, I was asking him, like, bro, is this going to be safe? And he, like, laughs and says, bro, this is Portugal, and this shit is legal. People walk around with test kits here because they're not going to buy any garbage. It's like they're not going to buy a cup of anything because there's so much pure cocaine here because it's legal. <laughs> yeah. And I thought... Is this heaven? And it was Lisbon. <laughs> Why don't you stay there, dude? I can see you living like in a foreign uh, country. Well, I only... You look like, like, like the white guy that lives in a foreign country. Yeah. Definitely, definitely could see that, yeah. I don't know, dude. The EU now, European Union, they're so like... uh, oh, that, uh Very collectivist. I don't know, man. I feel like they're trying to... I feel like they're trying to phase us out. I feel like we're the old model, honestly. Uh, the whole kind of... I feel like there's a... Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go too deep. Uh, I, I, there's clearly like, I guess, anti-white bias, so. I feel I'm not claiming racism, mm -hmm. uh, but I feel like the media has taken that stance noticeably. And it's funny to me because the media is all white people. It's like all of these news outlets are owned by older Jewish people. And that's just like, that's not anti Semitic either. That's, look it up the CNN, uh, MSNBC, ABC. Yeah. That, but they're the ones that push all this anti white stuff. And that just makes me think it's disingenuous because you would not dump all your money into something that. Uh, deprecate yourself unless you have an ulterior motive and you're just virtue signaling with that to keep people on your side. But don't you think historically like white people have fucked shit up the yes, most? Hell yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But here's the thing too. And damn, this is so fucked. I don't even want to get it too racy on a podcast. But no, no, my, get my, it, dude. My views are not prejudiced and they're, they're really not. White people fucked each other up for a long time, dude. The Battle of Troy is like 600 uh, BC. You know what I'm saying? That's high scale. The Holocaust, bro. They were both white. Both sides, yeah, ish, but that's <laughs> that's definitely, definitely ish. Definitely ish. I feel like I feel like Jewish people are white. Dude. They're not. They're not. They're, I mean, ethnically, because you can't marry outside of the race. I don't know. I feel like I see a Jewish person, a white person, they look very similar to me. Dude. That's uh, damn, mm. I can't even do this. Yes, that's that's. You think a, so? That's a great disguise. You think that so? That's a great way to blend in. Cause like I remember when I used to drive cabs in New York, people would be like, "I'm not white, I'm Jewish," and I'm like, "Dude, you look just like a white dude." <laughs> but they they do not say they're white though, right? They don't. They do no. not say they're white because they're but Jewish. Jewish. Yeah. they're distinct. Very it's like old school Dominicans. They're like darker than me, and they're like, "I'm not black, I'm <laughs> Spanish." It's but like, nigga, you black as fuck. There's three different kinds of Jewish people. I think there's a uh, Ashkenazi Jew, which is like the German Jew. There's the Mizrahim Jew, which is the Middle Eastern Jew, and there's the Sephardic Jew, which is the Spanish Jew, which is where oh, all the Spanish Jews went. Jew from spain there spain was like uh there was a ton of Jews to do with a big spain. nose and a sombrero when uh, maybe <laughs> oh they gotta have the little hat no when the muslims it's a little baby uh, sombrero in the back in the second temple period <laughs> it ain't, it ain't just a little cap it's a, sombrero. <laughs> it's a little mini sombrero right here dog. 
instead of instead of the, the yeah. Jewish bags, instead of a little Jewish cap in the bag, it's a little baby sombrero on top. Just eating hummus tacos and shit. Somebody's, done. Somebody's done it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Def had it then, right? There's a Hispanic Jewish rapper somewhere with a little sombrero. Bag. It's probably a little Jew. His Jew parents hate him. <laughs> so, Pequeño Jew. <laughs> so you weren't doing any um any music during any of this time? Um, Not literally until eleven months ago, you said. Well. I was writing. I had a girlfriend at the time who lived back here, and uh, I'm a hopeless romantic, so I would write her poems and stuff just Hell to yeah. uh, really to manipulate her into staying with me with writing <laughs> the fact that I was cheating on her all the time in Virginia. The three men, three men stuff. But either way, I was being very creative and trying to, you know, make her feel some type yeah, of way yeah, so yeah. that she would not leave me because she was so hot. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I took, uh, she broke up with me. Good for her, honestly. <laughs> she, she, she made a positive chain of choices right there. That sounded just like you, dude. Like yeah. every girl that was like, yo, good for her, dude. That was a piece of shit. She figured it out. <laughs> but I took two of these poems that I wrote for her uh, and put them as verses. And then I wrote the hook after we broke up and wrote a song and put it on YouTube called uh, Sober Blues. It is still there. And it's funny, actually, because I went back and listened to it the other day. I actually posted it on Facebook because... The writing composition, as far as like the multi-syllabistic end rhymes, the end of bars or stanzas, is like literally identical in the composition of that song, even though the song was a poem. So it let me, it kind of showed me that I have a baseline that I'm uh, like pulling from structurally that I've used through all of it. But that, I only did that one song and then uh, I didn't do it anymore because. And that when was that? 2015, maybe. Okay, so at that time, still in the Navy. Where'd you get out of the Navy? Still in the Navy. I got out on January 17th. Okay. Oh, really? January 17th? January. That's when my uh, active duty contract ended, too, actually. Yeah, yeah I actually 17. got out the day before Christmas, but I was on terminal leave. Mm, so, yeah. So, like the 17th. Yeah. So, 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 just, that's the only music thing you did was in 2015. Yeah, I would write little shit, you know? I would, like, when we were on watch, I'd have, like, uh, 12 hours of watch Sundays, because I was a fuck and deserved it. And I would be out there with that logbook, dude. I would just write. You know, I love, I've loved hip hop, bro. Like rap, rap. Since I was maybe like ten years old, I was playing quiz bowl, and I got number one, uh, like high individual score for this little elementary school quiz bowl meet. And my Aunt Amanda, shouts out, got me "Get Rich or Die Trying" by Fifty Cent. Bro, the hardest, hardest album. album. Ever. Oh my, I didn't know anything about Damn, rap. Hardest, Dude, hold on. hardest, hardest. We're never, we're never gonna go an episode without. We have never gone an episode without talking about "Get Rich or Die Trying" by Fifty Cent. <laughs> Don't start with. We need, we need to get a we need to get that album fucking on the Bro, wall I'm somewhere. Gonna, we only like fifty hard. cent tattoos. Yeah. Dude, dog feature, Eminem feature, like oh my god, classic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not even the features. Every song on there, you can yes. just hear back to back. Back to like, back, fucking ever, front to back, side to I'm side. Hear a song off that album, and be like, yo, will you turn this? Ever. Mm. Oh, but then two months later, she got me the Eminem show because I got number one. Shout out, that's again. another banger. Yeah. So I had these two CDs. Uh, for like a year and it was the only two cds i had dude. i just listened to them on repeat and just pick as a little kid i was uh what was on the m m show again what songs were on there uh business cleaning out my closet oh i love that one uh it was right it was the last good album he put out that's a joint with the curtain right it has like the red yeah, curtain the red yes. curtain yeah. Yeah. yes 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 it was the last real like uh creative masterpiece he did i think okay as a as an album Lee Price still my favorite rapper. Yeah, Nine Minutes Go, dude. <laughs> it hurts oh. my heart to see the stuff that he's been doing now, man, because it's like it's so technically complex. But and this was my biggest flaw when I started doing music was I was trying to show technical technical complexity to a level that one nobody gives a fuck about because mm. you listen to Eminem shit and it doesn't bump. Like, yeah, it is very cool, but like nobody's sitting there like, oh fuck yeah, bro, turn this up at the party. Yeah. Which there is more to music than turn this up at the party. But, dude, it's like, it's painful. You read his albums, he has fucking 23, 24 ghostwriters that are doing all this stuff for him. It's just not impressive to me. There's no creative expression through it. There's no, like, it's, it's, it's what everything else is. He does that better than anybody else does, granted. But if you listen to that early shit, if you listen to Still Don't Give a Fuck or uh, uh, Nobody's Iller or uh, there's a song that he did with Old World Disorder in, like, 94, like, that grimy ass, like, I'm... I'm from shit. I'm fucking a bastard. Listen to how my life is. It was expressive. And the shit he does now is yeah. vanilla. Yeah. Get, like creep. Kind of like, like uh, Nickelback. He doesn't I, come up with it. I think uh, 
not afraid from like all of that was just kind of like they all kind of like very similar to it's, me that it's mass appeal mass yeah appeal. it's the problem with music is the people who own music labels the people who own uh movie movie executive i don't know how that works production companies they have been running these fucking psychological warfare tests essentially uh for since the 20s since we learned that you that since psychological warfare was a thing we learn what reactions human have humans have to see in certain things and so they know what will be positively viewed rivers cuomo the lead singer from uh, weezer wrote the encyclopedia of pop music which is basically like how to make the most mass appealing song possible based off how humans react to hearing certain sounds and they have just taken that and ran in the direct it completely chokes out artistic anything because art isn't in 4-4 four, four timing and the GCD and art is not like that. Art is you expressing what you're in, what is going on around you. And it's so cookie cutter. Yeah, everybody can relate to it, so it's very popular. But the fact that everybody can relate to it means that it's not something that really needs to be expressed like that. Yeah, because anybody could do it. Anybody, yeah, like, yeah, she left, yeah, my girl left, I'm real sad. And nothing again, because I write music like that too from time to time, but it just sucks to see like the top 25 and it's like, there's probably 11 or 12 songs that I could not distinguish but really from one another. Do you think it's more like these kids are not really in love with music more than they're in love with being a rapper? Yes. Yeah. You know that's, what I'm mm. image and it's they're not they're not in love with the music. Not as much passionate about it. Yeah, as much as they're in love with like having gold that, chains and driving Rolls Royces. But yeah, I don't even want to hold that up too high because what is we even being in love with? Them? I feel like I am. But then that doesn't. No, but the way I hear you talk about music, you're talking about music like a fucking <clears throat> scientist, dude. Yeah. Like, I, this is what I was getting at earlier. <clears throat> I sat and picked those two albums apart, dude. Just like I would think, man, this sounds so good. Why does it sound good? And I would think about how the words were set up. I would think about how the syllables rhymed in relation to like where snares were hitting on the beat. And I just kind of like mapped out this little like timeline with eight squares in it. And that's how I would like map out how lyrics went. Like on yeah. the Hangover when they're trying to play the poker. It's the other everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I was bored. And he too. was a he was a retard. I didn't have any neighbors, bro. I had no neighbors, and I couldn't spend the night with anybody until I was fifteen. So I just stayed at home by myself, listening to these two CDs. Well, that because you had no friends, or you had like because uh, <laughs> yeah, he was, was in the ridges, man. Everybody I was in the ridges. Up, for, shot. Yeah, I, we had no neighbor. I couldn't even see another house from my house. It was like uh, just woods all around. And my parents, like I said, they're just some sketchy shit, but they loved us so much. My dad was so overprotective; he didn't want us to go to nobody else's house because you don't fucking know what other people do. Yeah, yeah. Especially out there. Dude. Yeah, in the ridge. Especially out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Straight up, bro. Yeah, so I just stayed at home and read books and listened to those two CDs. Fuck yeah. But so then when I started rapping, it was like I already knew exactly what patterns on this eight block. Each bar would have been eight block. I knew what pattern sounded the best to me. So when I sit down to write, I already know what syllables are like specifically going to be emphasized and where. But that's my biggest downfall in music is I do look at it too mathematically. And I lost that, or I'd never had that feeling. Like when you listen to music and you're like, oh, okay. And then I did a bunch of mushrooms one night and came here <laughs> and wrote this song on my SoundCloud. Who's her favorite rapper now? Fucked up, drunk and on mushrooms. I'm saying them Zaddy's too. But uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, I put that out and it was so, I could feel it. It was the first time I could ever feel music. And ever since then, my music is not day and night different, but it's definitely noticeably more, okay. Instead of just like, wow, what an impressive lyrical how, composition. How long ago was that? Um, uh, fuck, I don't know. Uh, October. Okay, because I remember, I definitely remember, remember you November. being, remember, remember you being in here. I think it was with finesse, mm. and I remember you like, like going oh, into like the whole, spazzing. into like the whole lyrical thing or whatever. And then I remember you like checking yourself and being like, okay, the lyrics are there, but I need a flow. I need like That's something it. to change. <laughs> So I was like, oh, you definitely had, and that was like, I don't know, like a month ago or whatever. Because yeah. for me, it's always been like, I've always like gone with that first. I always try to go with the feeling first and then try to put the that's words in That's going to make you successful. There. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. The, the way that I conceptualized music this night on Mushrooms was this way. Matt, the way, his creative process is he will record like mumble melodies first over a beat, mm -hmm. right? So it's very natural, the sound of the flow of the music in relation to the beat. And we had been... <laughs> Fucked up for a day or two, honestly. I'm just like, <laughs> a huge sack of mushrooms. Uh, Yo, what does it feel like to be on mushrooms? Uh, like 
the particles that make you up also make up everything else and the consciousness that you have is shared by everything and all that consciousness relates back to one source in the universe and then maybe there is a collective consciousness that we're all part of that sounds fucking scary <laughs> scary what? as fuck it sounds like you could read and move shit with your head so, and blow shit out with most, your mind that was the most influential thing <laughs> I've ever done to my personality and thought process and I, it's the the best thing I've ever done in my life I don't advise it but if you're having a hard time and maybe don't get what's going on in your life you can put some stuff together on psychedelics because you can look at yourself like you're somebody else looking at you, but you know all the bad shit you did. So you know what the fuck to straighten up and you know what your life's going to look like if you don't. So fast, bro. Right. But do you think that that feeling will go away once you're not high anymore? No. I did it the first time when I was 17. I did LSD. 